So there's a lot of material that I have prepared, but I think I'll, I'll just kind of touch on the main points. And um, there are lots of resources uh, for you to go online, as Lindsay said, to get the basic tools for starting your own library, for understanding the value of um, developing a culture of sharing seeds and preserving um, uh, bioagricultural di diversity. Uh, so, but I wanted to, oh, whoops, um, just acknowledge, I know that uh, we have a number of libraries here today who have their own seed libraries, and I'll, I'll plug Emily once again. It looks like Emily is doing everything, because you may have seen she published an article in uh, the Public Libraries magazine, uh, Simple Steps to Starting a Seed Library. So it talks about the Mountain View experience. So there's just a lot, um, uh, a lot of libraries uh, starting seed li lending libraries. Uh, San Jose Public Library, uh, Alameda Free Library, Oakland Public Library, among, I'm sure, many others. Um, raise your hands if you are involved in a seed lending library in your library. Yeah, so we have a wealth of experience, so when it comes to the q and I uh, encourage you to get involved as well to share your stories. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through uh, this. There's a seed library uh, social network. It's a way for people to connect with each other. Uh, in 2010, there were just something like 10 or 12 seed lending libraries. Richmond grows among them. Um, now there are um, at least 300 seed libraries, and many of them are located in public libraries. So this is just probably an outdated map. Uh, doesn't show all the 300, but you can get the sense that in a very short time, um, many seed lending libraries have uh, started up. And, um, you know, there, like Lindsay said, this is an evolution of uh, seed lending. So you can start with what we've, we started with is really about encouraging people to grow their own food, um, but also evolve over time to really develop a practice of, save, of encouraging gardeners, once they are in the mode of gardening, to then uh, grow out and harvest uh, some of their crops for just for cultivating uh, seeds to share. We're not quite at that. I mean, we get some people who are, are um, not just taking seeds, but bringing seeds back. But we have a long way to go to, to really make our, our seed library uh, sustainable. There are a lot of, um, we live in the Bay Area, so many of you have probably been to the um, National uh, Heirloom Expo that happens in Sonoma County. Uh, Rebecca New Newburn uh, started an annual seed summit, for, so it's an informal way of seed libraries getting together and sharing tips of what's worked or what's not, what their challenges are. Um, um, the Bay Area Interchange Seed Exchange in Berkeley, they're very experienced. They have great resources to share as well. I love, um, you know, just the culture of, of sharing that goes on. Um, our program is not just about making the seeds available, but um, it's really program rich. So actually a program that I did, um, in 2011 uh, with Novella Carpenter, Novella Carpenter uh, Book to Action, uh, which was actually the first Book to Action program that we launched in, in Hayward and in, in California. Now the Book to Action model has really taken off throughout the state. Um, but we, we invited Novella to speak uh, and had a standing room uh, only audience. Uh, partnered with the schools, so we went out into the um, community garden and worked with the, and supported uh, the school li school uh, garden that was uh, going on at one of the schools. And since then, we have we continue to offer many um, ongoing workshops. So I just have a few uh, examples. We had a wet seed saving workshop to show how you um, cultivate seeds from plants like tomatoes. Um, with the drought uh, in California, we brought in uh, Bay Friendly to run a Lose Your Lawn workshop. So not all of the workshops are related to seed saving. It's more generally providing resources for 
and encouraging people to develop it, their own gardening practice. And uh, in May, we launched, um, you know, all of this is really community building because um, in all of our programs, um, it's about as much as providing a platform for the experts to, to talk about uh, their experience, but also for every participant to share their experience and their knowledge and, you know, point out, oh, have you tried such and such for this great um, garden tool or, you know, there are ways that, you know, we're really encouraging people to go out and get compost together and, you know, really band together. So the Seed uh, Savers and Gardeners Club at this point is meeting uh, quarterly, um, but many of our members, I think before long, will be meeting more frequently because everybody really likes the social aspect of this program. We had a volunteer presenter come and, um, you know, just a member of the community who loves to garden. She said, I, I'll, I'll volunteer to run a, a, a workshop about growing plants from seeds. So she did it, um, had a great response. She brought seedlings to share with uh, participants. Um, but sometimes we do bring in uh, the experts to respond to interests uh, expressed uh, in the community. Uh, so, for example, um, we, we've continued to, to build our collaboration with Alameda County Master Gardeners. And um, at one of our workshops, a lot of people expressed interest in learning more about growing citrus trees. So we brought in uh, an expert to um, do more of a kind of lecture classroom style presentation. Um, so, and we did actually pay a speaker's fee. As much as possible, we try to find um, presenters who will be volunteers and sharing their um, expertise. Um, we had a really great um, intro to herbal medicine and teas. Uh, again, it was a, a local community member who's just, she put a phenomenal amount of energy into um, making various herbal teas to share, and then everybody did these um, herb, herbal, herb infused um, olive oil, uh, uh, where we actually, she brought all of the herbs and we learned about their uh, medicinal qualities, and then had jars where you put the olive oil in and, and, and tear up all the herbs and put it in, and then six weeks later you have a, um, a medicinal uh, oil that can help with when your muscles are sore and things like that. So it was really, really um, fun and educational. Um, but we've also organized things recently. In September, we had a Beekeeping 101 workshop, which was uh, really fun. And just uh, this last Saturday, we brought in uh, Patrick O'Connor from the Bay Area Seed Interchange um, Library to do a, a basic seed saving introduction course. And that was uh, really well attended. Um, and we got to, uh, we had a little presentation and then followed by actually, okay, here are the, the screens and, and here are some herbs and, and seeds and, and actually, um, getting the seeds out and, and then contributing to them to our library. I don't, um, you know, we have continued over the last, um, I think I'm going over. So um, we've, in the last six months or so, we've, we've um, tried to streamline our processes. So we now have an, a website with an online form for membership. Every, we, um, we really want to collect stories, and so we have testimonials that are collected. Really, you'll see that everything about the Seed Library is about building our local community. We have an online uh, membership form. We use Constant Contact to keep in touch. And I don't have time to do the primer on why um, it's important to save seeds, but probably many of you already understand why it's valuable and there's a wealth of resources, um, including the Seed Underground book that we used. So I think I'll just leave it at that and then um, open it up to questions. <laughs>